In this video I'm going to show you um, taking the wort from the boil kettle. I just finished boiling, I shut my burner off and uh, it's near boiling temperatures right now but everything from here on has to be sanitized. Um, and the previous night I, uh, I got some water heated up boiling and I, I pumped it through my chiller which is right here and then I also ran some sanitizing solution through my chiller and left it sit in there like that so my chiller inside should be nice and sanitized um, any any stray yeast or bacteria that gets in the wort at this point is gonna it has great potential to ruin your beer um, those little microorganisms uh, will ferment um, and eat those sugars just like the brewer's yeast will except the the, the bad stuff will, will give you bad flavors the brewer's yeast will ferment those sugars and give you good flavors, the ones you, you want, um, the bad bacteria and yeast, it, although it, it's really not harmful to you, you just talk about bacteria getting in it, it's bacteria that's, that's in the air anyhow, uh, but it, when, it, when it eats those sugars, um, it, it just makes a, a bad flavor, just like spoiled food in your refrigerator. So I'm going to, um, if you see here, I, I already hooked up my, my uh, hose from, from my chiller uh, outlet and that's going up into my fermenter and I'll talk about my fermenter in a minute um, but I just have it going in there at this point once it's chilled down I don't care about it being aerated actually you need it aerated you want oxygenated uh, that gives those yeast um, some uh, oxygen to grow on and, and, and split and make new yeast cells you want as many yeast cells in there as possible on this side you don't want it aerated at all when it's hot you don't want to oxygenate the beer because that will that'll that'll mess it up. It'll give it some bad flavors. Um, it's called hot side aeration. Uh, if you can Google that, look it up to see uh, you know, if you want to look at the chemistry on what's happening there. But um, you don't want to aerate it at all. So you want to <clears throat> want everything on on this side while it's hot to be as gentle as possible. Over here, you want to aerate it. Um, some people use uh, canisters of, of uh, oxygen and a and a stone. Uh, that's actually going to be my next purchase. I'm going to do that, but right now I just kind of aerate it manually as much as possible. It's not the best way. Uh, that's why I'm going to buy that oxygen. But for right now, it, uh, it seems to work. I've done it a couple times so far, so it's good. So while I, uh, I have all this, I've sanitized it all, I'm going to open up this valve, which goes into my chiller. And while it's running, I'll, I'll show you how that works. But I'm going to open this up and open this up. This is the drain for the... Um, boil kettle and that'll get that in there and then this is what I use to control the flow because uh, the faster it goes through the less it's going to have time to chill down uh, so you just kind of have to work this valve and, and, and read this temperature uh, read that thermometer there to see you want it about about 70 degrees is pretty good uh, that'll give that yeast a uh, good temperature to get started I'm going to go uh, turn the water on uh, to, for my counterflow chiller, that'll that'll get the the cold water in there to run run through that, um, and I'll be right back, and we'll start we'll start chilling the beer. Okay, right now as you can see, um, I'm gonna run my pump, and I'm run the the work through the chiller. I'm gonna run the first little bit into the bucket because I have some sanitizing solution in there. And I just want to clean all that out. Uh, you want the chiller nice and sanitized, nice and clean. Uh, you can't be too careful on that. And I'm just going to run this through and make sure, make sure you chill it, chill it down good enough. So I flush that out. Now I'm gonna, like I said, you can never be too careful. This is just a solution of that star sand. It's a no rinse sanitizer. Um, spray that on there. I'm gonna put this end in, into my fermenter. And I'll show you this. Turn my pump on. So I got, got water flowing through here. This is cold water. See my fitting here, you got the cold water coming in here. This copper tube here, I, I took a, a reducing fitting and drilled it out so this will go clear through it. So, and this tube is actually going through this hose 
this uh, half inch tube terminates about right here and you see that the smaller smaller tube goes through the whole thing so you can kind of imagine that the water is flowing out on the outside of this through here going opposite directions um, and you can look up the physics of counterflow chillers uh, while we, I won't explain uh, the benefits of the counterflow um, but they, they do work really well I have my thermometer here taking it from boiling temperature I have the valve all the way open you can see and it's uh, about 70, about 70 degrees. That's that's right where I want it. Um, I have to work the pump a little bit because as it's coming out of the boil kettle, it's really hot and um, you get some cavitation. And uh, you can read up on that too. I'm not going to go into all the science of everything, but uh, the cavitation basically makes some air bubbles in the pump there, and uh, make, gives you um, makes it not not flow through as well. So you kind of have to work that a little bit. And deal with that, but um, yeah, it's it's chilling it off pretty good. Uh, you can see it going into the fermenter here. You know, see, I I got some cavitation going again. I gotta gotta work my pump, get those air bubbles out. While this is hot, it's just. Uh, Makes, makes air bubbles in that pump housing and, and doesn't give you good suction, but you keep keep working it, you keep going, so it'll, it'll flow up through there. Pretty nice. It takes a little bit of time, but um, it's worth it. And that's my that's my chiller. I have 50 foot of hose and tubing going through there. You can see my my hose cold water outlet here. This is the the inlet for the, the hot work and it, you know, it's pretty hot to touch right now actually I can't really uh, hold on to it now but as it once it gets to this side you know as you saw before it's getting down to 70 degrees actually it's probably going a little cooler cooler than that so I might want to turn down my, my chiller water a little bit but that's that's the chilling process uh, let me know if you have any questions post them on the comments um, and I'll, I'll try to answer them.